five NLDS, four Silver Slugger Awards, three NLCS, two World Series appearances, and one World Series title, the prodigal son has come home. Chase Utley, Long Beach, born and bred, a UCLA Bruin, is about to play his first game with the team he grew up rooting for. A second-round pick of the Dodgers in 97, he went to Westwood instead. Three years later, a first-round pick of the Phillies, he went on to become one of the most popular and greatest players in Phillies history. The Dodgers, after being swept in Oakland, begin a three-game series tonight with the first place and upstart Astros deep in the heart of Texas. The Dodgers have 42 games left in the regular season, and the chase is on. It's a beautiful night for baseball. And live from Minute Maid Park in Houston, Sportsnet LA presents the Los Angeles Dodgers and the Houston Astros in the first of a three-game series. Hi again, everybody. Charlie Steiner, Oral Hershiser. Nomar is off this week. Of course, the big story, the Dodgers have a new second baseman who will be DHing tonight in Chase Utley. Utley says before the game, this is not the final 42 games of his career. He is here for this year and hopefully beyond. Yeah, and this is just not insurance for Howie Kendrick. This is depth. This is a guy who can play second, play third, play first base and when you think about Chase Utley you think about a veteran that has been through the playoffs has won a world championship ring and he is paired up again with his running mate at shortstop Jimmy Rollins this is a pair that can win a world championship has won a world championship and I think the Dodgers are looking for more than depth they're looking for the Chase Utley that was hot coming off the DL hitting 484. So the Dodgers lead the Giants by two and a half. They got a big reinforcement in the lineup tonight. When we come back, Alana Rizzo will talk with Chase Utley as the Dodgers and Astros get ready to play the first of three.
was back in 2000. And his play begins tonight. The Dodgers two and a half in front of the Giants. But the Giants have a 5-2 to two lead after two innings of play in Pittsburgh. Our closed captioning brought to you by Shumash Casino Resort, where we are all about you. And so there's the new kid in town, Chase Utley, who will be in the DH spot tonight. While we have a moment, let's give that starting lineup put together by Don Mattingly and brought to you by Honda. With Rollins leading off and Utley batting second, Utley the DH. Justin Turner batting third and Adrian Gonzalez in the cleanup spot. Andre Ethier is in right. Yasmani Grandal behind the plate. Carl Crawford grew up in Houston batting seventh. Kike Hernandez at second base. Jock Peterson at center field batting ninth. Mike Fires, a 30-year-old right-hander, making his 22nd start of the year. So far, so good for Fires, especially since coming to Houston. The 30-year-old. Hasn't had many outings with Houston, but he is going to throw the ball straight over the top with about a 91 mile an hour fastball. His second best pitch is out pitch, which is really deceptive because the delivery is his changeup. And thus all has a very good 12 to 6 curveball. The Dodgers are going to have to stay on the fastball. He likes to pitch up in the zone, even though he doesn't throw the ball 95. So at 91, you still want to make sure it's a strike because it's hard to get on top of. In his last start last Sunday against the Tigers, two unearned runs in five and a third. He struck out five and walked two. Three and one lifetime against the Dodgers in three starts and four appearances overall. Let's take a look now at the Astro defense playing behind them. They've made only 63 errors this year. Third best in the American League. Jed Lowry at third and Carlos Correa. Can't wait to see him at shortstop. Altuve at second base. Chris Carter, the power hitting first baseman. Rasmus, Carlos Gomez hasn't done a thing since coming over from Milwaukee. Jake Marisnik is in right. Jason Castro is the catcher. And so this is a big game for both clubs. The Astros trailing the Angels, correction, leading the Angels by two and a half. The Dodgers are two and a half in front of San Francisco. See, we are ready to play. And this Astro club at 66 and 56 has finally turned things around after many years of being in the doldrums under new ownership. They finally have taken hold and away we go. Jimmy Rollins, boy, was he happy today to see his old buddy Chase Utley, who's in the on-deck circle. It'll be Rollins and Utley and Turner as we get underway. Rollins at two and a quarter with 12 home runs and 39 runs batted in. And the first pitch slapped off to the left. Rasmus will run out of room. So Minute Maid Park built in 2000 after all those years first at Colt Stadium and then at the eighth wonder of the world the Astrodome. I had a lot of years in that Astrodome. And it was an odd place to play when there wasn't many people but it was very loud when they packed it. And had real big mosquitoes. <laughs> Rollins swings and misses. And it's nothing in two. The Astros 17 and 14 since the All-Star break. They've had three walk-off wins this week alone. Fires on 0 and 2. That's the third baseman Lowry. So we are underway. And here comes Chase Utley. After 6,617 plate appearances, 5,048 at bats, this is the first one not in a Phillies uniform. He brings a lot more than his veteran presence to this lineup. He is swinging a hot bat right now since coming off the DL, He's hitting 484. So here is the pitch to Utley. I had away one ball no strikes and talking with him a bit today. He said look I, I'm not here just to play the final 42 games. I still have a career ahead of me. And let's see where the next 42 games take him and the Dodgers. But this is he doesn't see this as just a part time role. Inside. When he is healthy he's one of the better hitters in the game. Career 282 hitter but has a 
very high slugging percentage for a second baseman so it's not just an average it's a lot of pop ahead two balls and no strikes now it's three and all oh. you notice already with the first three pitches how good an eye he has those balls have all been kind of borderline possible strikes no nerves as far as all I need to impress my new teammates not expanding the strike zone but putting on a professional at bat on three and oh right down the pike three and one well, I asked him today do you, do you feel like you know the new kid in class is that what a little bit he said it felt more like going to an all-star game and meeting guys that you've played with before of course he can speak to that he was a six-time all-star pops it foul and out of play Got a Long Beach Poly and of course UCLA. He was a first round pick of the Phillies in 2000. In 97, the Dodgers picked him in the second round. He went to UCLA instead. Great hitters must come out of Poly. Tony Gwynn went there also. Mm -hmm. On three and two. Carter's got it. Two out and nobody on. Chase Utley's first at bat as a Dodger grounds to first. So out of Long Beach is Utley. Out of Bellflower is Justin Turner. At 312 with 14 home runs and 47 runs batted in. Turner at third base tonight. Gonzalez on deck. Center fielder Gomez slightly toward right center. It was a call strike, nothing in one. Justin at 312. 340 last year, his first year with the Dodgers. He takes inside, and it's one and one. Madison Bumgarner hit a home run tonight. Giants lead the Pirates five to two, playing in the third at PNC. Madison Bumgarner showing he's not just a good pinch hitter. He's a good hitter. Period. He is. He's a big, strong country guy. That can, he can pull. With Adrian Gonzalez on deck. One and two to Turner just underway here in Houston. Off to the right and out of play. These Astros have been tough at home this year. They lost their last game to Tampa Bay. They got one hit by Chris Archer. But they have not lost consecutively at home since June 26th and 27th. And the Dodgers have lost five straight on the road. A bit of a mountain for the Dodgers to climb on this Friday. Right. Turner Court played collegiately at Cal State Fullerton. We're up in Long Beach, lives in Bellflower, the 2 2. Chops a breaking ball back. Justin in a bit of a slump. Not really had much luck of late. Hadn't hit the ball real hard. We're so used to him squaring up two and three balls a night and he gets to start. Now the starting third baseman. He's having a little lull right now. Looking to get it going. 0 for 3 and a walk on Wednesday. Of course, yesterday an off day. And Turner takes high and away. Three and two. Fires. He doesn't have his rhythm. He's showing an awful lot of respect for the Dodger hitters. He is not wanting to throw them many strikes. This is the fourth time he has started against the Dodgers. Three and two, two out. Top of the first. Foul. First inning, third hitter. You're getting a three-two changeup. Last three pitches, a high fastball to set up a breaking ball, and then come back three and two with a changeup. That's Fire's number one out pitch. He's 6'2, 200. 
30 years of age out of Pompano Beach, Florida. Pitch is a little taller than 6'2 because of the way he throws straight over the top. Up and in. So Turner works out a walk with two out. Turner wins a nine pitch at bat. A two out walk. And here's Adrian Gonzalez. Knowing Adrian, the way he studies pitchers and knowing fire stuff, I think this is a very good matchup for the Dodgers. Seven at bats. Adrian does have a home run. He's very good at staying on a fastball and a changeup, those being the predominant pitchers from fires. Got underneath it and into right. That's Marisnik. And that's that for the Dodgers in the first. No runs, no hits, a walk, good a band left. Fred Anderson getting ready for his 24th start of the year, and he'll be facing Altuve, Gomez, and Correa. Record and here is the lineup he has put together, courtesy of Honda. Jose Altuve listed at 5'7, and they say that's on his tiptoes. Carlos Gomez and Carlos Correa does a superstar in waiting. Lowry at third, Gaddis at DH, Colby Rasmus in left, Chris Carter at first base, Jake Marisnik is in right, Jason Castro is the catcher. And it's Brett Anderson, the 27-year-old left-hander. He's a Texan making his 24th start of the year. Altuve at 305, takes high, one ball, no strikes. Brett Anderson won his last start against Cincinnati at home. Beat him eight to three. He went six innings in that game. I think today he's really got to get the ground ball working. He's been giving up too many home runs of late. Seven home runs in his last six games. His first 17 games, he only gave up six home runs. So maybe he's getting a little tired, or maybe when he's not getting that ground ball, the ball's a little too elevated. Passed it Donovan Rollins, and Altuve is aboard. A leadoff single to left. Defensively behind Anderson tonight, he just saw Jimmy Rollins at short. Turner's at third. Kike Hernandez, Adrian Gonzalez on the right side of the infield. Carl Crawford in left. Jock Peterson, first time he is seeing Tal's Hill. Be the last time after this series. Tal's Hill is disappearing after the end of the season. Andre Ethier is in right. Grandall behind the plate. And Brett Anderson. Now, Carlos Gomez, he was one of those trade deadline deals that simply to this point has not panned out, hitting 188 with the Astros. Takes outside and low one ball and no strikes and that immediately brings a meeting from Brandall out to uh, Anderson. A 92 
two stolen bases for these Astros. It could have been a little bit about the running game. It also could have been about, I need you to miss down. You give up the base hit on a ball up, and that first pitch was up. Let's go. Get the ball down. Grandall has thrown out 14 of 61, 23%. Now two a short lead. Ground ball, right side, base hit. So the Astros are in business right away. Five pitches into the game, they've got a threat goal. Well, you say it was only about a four or five hopper, wasn't hit that hard, but the location of the pitch is what Brett Anderson will talk about for himself because this ball probably should have gotten top. You look at Cosmani Grandal's glove go up, that ball is up, and you just easily can see that he can just push that ball over there to the right side. Hernandez was shaded towards second, opening the hole, and now here's Carlos Correa. 15 home runs, 41 runs batted in. Somebody forgot to tell him he's 20 years old. Takes a strike, and it's nothing in one. At 20 years old, he's only going to get stronger with that frame, and weight training, and his man strength comes on. He has a very, very bright future. Of all the shortstops in the game, Brandon Crawford leads with 19 home runs. Johnny Peralta has 16. Crawford hit his 19 home runs in 115 games. Peralta in 113 games. Carlos Correa has hit his 15 home runs in 63 games. He reminds me of a young A-Rod, the way he goes about his business. Maturity he shows in the batter's box already with that power. Lowry on deck, fouled off to the right. People around the Astros organization talk about his work ethic, that his head is on straight, that he's a down to earth, humble kid. Even though the statistics are starting to blossom, that his, his mind and his personality is into learning. Young man who gets it. Brown ball. Hernandez will take it and throw to first for a double play. Altuve goes to third with two out. And Jed Lowry coming up. As bad as you thought the defensive alignment was for the Dodgers when the base hit by Gomez went to right field is as good as it is right here. You have two people that he had to hit it through. The second one, Kike Hernandez gets it. This ball gets five. Brad Anderson, but Kike is right there to back him up for a very easy double play. Now let's see if Anderson can get out of this jam. Jed Lowry was first and second, nobody out. And now Altuve there is a third. Lowry at 265, little comebacker. And Anderson gets out of it. No runs, two hits, and one man left. Nothing but ground balls, perhaps a good sign of things to come for Brett Anderson. Scoreless as we go to the second.
2015 Jeep Cherokee with an EPA estimated 31 highway MPG. It's the perfect choice. Visit Jeep.com today. Well, Brett Anderson could breathe a sigh of relief. Scoreless as we go to the second. Andre Ethier, Yasmani Grandal, and Carl Crawford going up against Mike Fires. So your assessment of Anderson in the first. You know what? I thought he got back into it pretty good, but the first few hitters, those balls that were up, and I think the the visit by Yasmani Grandal was warranted, even though it was only a few pitches into the game, and then he made some adjustments and got back out of it. That ball hit up the middle by Correa was blistered. Fortunately, PK was there to pick him up. And a double play. Ethier to lead off in the second. A seven game hitting streak coming to an end day before yesterday. Of course, it was an off day for the Dodgers. Eighth year with a terrific month of August. Hey, he's had a solid year 288, 12 home runs, and 39 runs batted in. Now Andre is uh, really healthy this year. He will attribute to that. And then the cross section of the the X factor of experience, health, and just understanding how to apply himself to the game with the tools that he has now. A little bit like Adrian Gonzalez when Adrian went through his injury with his front shoulder. And he, you learn how to survive when you're healthy enough to play but not hurt enough to be on the DL. And then when it all comes back together, you learn from that experience and you can apply it. He's been on base 15 of his last 17 games. In those 17 games, hitting 346, two home runs and six runs batted in. Randall on deck and Crawford to follow. Slicing foul. A little different philosophy of hitting today for the Dodgers because with Mike Fires even throwing 90 91 he likes to pitch up so the Dodgers are going to be thinking make him get the ball down. Usually a guy at that velocity 90 91 it's make him get the ball up because he's trying to sink it and keep it down but Fires actually likes to pitch up there where it looks like a big old goose egg to you but it's too high to hit. If your lays off. Giants now six to two in Pittsburgh, top half of the fourth. Shut out by Charlie Morton last night. They've got Bumgarner going there tonight. He's also hit a home run. Take a look at this pitch. It's 89 miles an hour, but look at the location. It's up and he misses the target, but he likes to pitch there just above the waist or letter high. It looks really good to the hitter, but it's hard to get on top of. We'll do it again. So Andre Ethier, well, that stunk. In the month of August, 349. Career coming to Houston back when they're in the National League. He's at over 320 here. Three and two as we begin the second. Justin Turner had a nine pitch at bat in the first inning. And the next pitch will be the tenth for Ethier in this inning. So the Dodgers are making fires sweat. And he works out a walk. So Turner walked on a nine pitch at bat. Ethier begins the second inning with a 10 pitch walk. The fires with that high fastball, and it's not a swing and miss fastball up there. It gets a lot of foul balls or a lot of takes for balls. In his last outing, only went five and a third against Detroit, 96 pitches. 
The outing before that, six and two thirds, 95. That was pretty efficient, but one before that, five innings, 96. So he gets up right around 100, around five to six innings. Here, just Monty Grandall. Foul ball. Grandall and the Dodgers catch a break. As Bonnie at 280 with 15 home runs, 44 runs batted in. Well, prior to the crossing of the bag, Bill Welke calls it right there. I guess it's right over the bag, so it could be his call. Normally, the home plate umpire would make the call if it's short of the bag. Randall still hitting well, but mostly singles and doubles. It's been a while since he's hit a home run. One ball, one strike to Yasmani Grandal. He's hit equally well at home and on the road. 286 away from Dodger Stadium. Has a lower batting average as a left handed batter. But has hit all his home runs from this side of the plate. Carl Crawford is on deck. See, all the home runs from the left side. There's a little bit more of an arc from the left side in the swing. Walked nicely by Juan Castro. He's a nice block with a man on first right there. And when you talk about switch hitters, and Yasmani is a right-handed thrower. You know, the bottom hand is the power hand on the bat. So it wouldn't surprise you then that he hit most of his home runs from the left side, because that's his bottom hand, the right hand, that he throws with. Ball strike three. Randolph thinking to himself, John Campaign has such a generous strike zone. Wait till Anderson comes back to pitch. Might have just caught the corner. Oh boy. Camera angle maybe fools us a little bit. But pitch tracks is right on and says it was a strike. First strikeout for Fires. One out and one on. And Carl Crawford coming up. For Crawford, it's a homecoming. Grew up in Houston. He has been hot since coming off the disabled list. Crawford has a hit in five of his last six games. In fact, he's eight for his last 14. And since July 21st, so it's been a month, he's hitting 333 at a 381 on base percentage. Dodgers hoping he can get hot down the stretch. Hundred and twenty games in, forty-two remain, including tonight. Altuve, Correa. There'll be no throwback. Good, clean, hard slide by Ethier. Correa had to clear the deck, and Crawford too fast to break. Carl gets fooled on a. Change up, and that's pretty routine force out. And as you said, Charlie, there should be no relay right there. The youngster at short doing the smart thing and just eating it. With two out, Kike Hernandez stepping in. Hernandez at 304. With Jimmy Rollins getting hot and getting back to the top of the order, and now with the addition of Chase Utley, then you go Justin Turner, Adrian Gonzalez, Andre Ethier, Yasmani Grandal, then Carl Crawford. You finally get down to the two young guys in the eight and nine holes since we're in American League game. And the, the lineup starts to look like it should, according to resumes. 
Hernandez, a sixth round pick of the Astros a couple of years back. Takes a strike, nothing in one. A lot of times you always, you know, you like to have your younger guys down the bottom of the order, keep the pressure off them, but both of these guys also at the bottom of the order, Kike Hernandez and Jock Peterson, can put a charge into the ball. So they might not always hit for a high average, but they can bring some sock there. The Astros to the Marlins to the Dodgers. Kike Hernandez back with a head first slide. Carl Crawford. Carl stolen three out of four. Dodgers with the fewest stolen bases of any club in the majors. 30. Or two less than Jose Altuve. Fouled off to the right. Carter has some room. And the Dodgers go no Rosso hits a walk of the man left. We'll go to the bottom of the second. Gaddis, Rasmus, and Carter coming up against Fred Anderson for scoreless in Houston. fan and just might see yourself in an upcoming telecast brought to you by T Mobile. So we go to the bottom half of the second inning and big Evan Gaddis steps in. He don't need no stinking bat and gloves. <laughs> like a lumberjack up there. Got 260 pounds, Paul Bunyan. He is really an exception to the rule on a lot of levels. He has nine triples and no stolen bases. I asked where he hits most of his triples. They say uh, left center caroming off the brick of the bullpen or just out of the reach of maybe the center fielder and it goes up Tal's Hill. That'll be the last year of Tal's Hill. They paid homage to old Crosley Field. And they decided, you know, maybe it wasn't such a good idea. Gaddis, two and two. It's a conversation piece when you're losing. <laughs> Makes life miserable yep. if you're a visitor. Two balls, two strikes. Gaddis leading off the second. Sliced foul. You mentioned the upside numbers for Gaddis as far as the triples and no stolen bases. Well, a guy with no triples but 32 stolen bases, Altuve. These guys need to look in the mirror with their statistics. Well hit to left center. Way back there, and in front of the wall, Crawford tracks it down. 
Well, that is the perfect ball for the Astros if he wants a, another triple because that's exactly where he would hit it over there and then it, all of a sudden it gets in front of the bullpen and hits off the cement and comes back towards the infield. Gattis after this fly ball is caught is about in between first and second. So if this does anything about going off the wall, it is a triple. And you see the brick where the WM is there and then the rest of it is fencing. Nice play by Carl Crawford. Colby Rasmus steps in. Rasmus 17 home runs 44 runs batted. In fact these two teams lead their respective leagues in home runs. The Dodgers with 148. The Astros with 164. There's a strike. Minute Maid Park the dimensions are well curious. Down the left field line, only 315 feet. But the fence, the wall, is 19 feet high. And the power alley where Crawford just made the catch, the wall out there is 25 feet high. Then you get to center field and Tal's Hill. Well, it's also a warning track that gives you no warning because it is different lengths in different places. So a guy like Carl Crawford, when he's going in left field, Towards the corner, it is really, really hard for him into the power alley to understand where he's at. Ball strike three. Rasmus is down, and that's Anderson's first strikeout. If we could take a shot out there in left center gap after this break ball you see right here catches the corner. That's outstanding right on the corner. That'll lock you up. Chris Carter stepping in. Carter's an all or nothing proposition. 17 home runs, 49 runs batted in, hitting 180. Takes under the knees, one ball and no strikes. He has struck out 128 times. So when he hits them, they go real far. Real strong, unbelievable bat speed. Contact is an issue. One and two. Jake Marisnik is on deck. Dodgers have the shift on to the left side. Kike Hernandez about three or four steps to the third base side of second. And about three or four steps on the grass. Chopper to third. Foul ball. You can hear John Tumpain, the home plate umpire, scream out, foul ball. This crew's had a couple of those already right down the line, just on the bag or just short of the bag. Tumpain calling balls and strikes from the Chicago area. He's 32, vacation reliever. Field for a two out single for Chris Carter. Well, Brett Anderson wants that one back. He's glad it's still in the ballpark with two out. This is a break ball. He's trying to go down and you see Osmani glove on the dirt down there. And Brett misses his target by a foot, foot and a half too high. Top of the fifth in Pittsburgh. Pirates six. I'm sorry, the Giants six to two over the Pirates. Bumgarner pitching for San Francisco. Now Marisnik takes high and away. One ball and no strikes. Marisnik at 228. Local product from Riverside. Well, the Astros with their 165th home run of the season. They've hit more home runs than anybody else. But Marisnik is sixth of the year, and they've got a 2 0 lead.
pretty much when Brett Anderson has missed so far tonight, he has missed up, and that was another up miss. And it's in the heart of the plate. Right down the middle, change up 84 miles an hour, and he does not miss it at all. A change up. Change up down the middle is like a BP fastball. Pretty easy to hit. 406 feet is what they say it traveled. And Castro lines up base hit into the left field corner. So the last three hitters have really beaten up on Anderson. A line two out single to Carter. The two run home run to Marisnik. And Castro with a double into the left field corner. Osmani Grandal's glove there, reaching back a little bit. Really a decent pitch. Solid big league pitch, but a good piece of hitting. Taking a breaking ball the opposite way, staying back and driving it in the left field corner. Now Brett Anderson just needs to get the Dodgers in the dugout. It's early. You're down 2-0. You got to keep it at 2-0 right here. Get in the dugout and give your offense a chance. Altuve steps in. He single the left in his first at bat. Takes a strike and it's nothing in one. A couple of years ago when the Astros were falling apart at the seams, and Jeff Lunau, the general manager, was basically saying, you can have anybody you want on our roster. As long as they're taller than 5'7". Altuve listed at 5'7", and most folks will tell you he's about 5'5 five, five and a half or 5'6". And he lines one into the glove. Well, shorthanded, and then he'll throw it out to make it a complete out. James Boy with the call. Hernandez throws that out. Tuve, the inning is over. Two runs, three hits, and a man left. When we come back for the third, it'll be Peterson, Rollins, and Utley. with a 400 and six foot home run has given the Astros a two to nothing lead as we head to the third and it's time for a look at the cold hard bats well we'll look at it soon enough but first we will take a look at Jock Peterson Peterson at 216 23 home runs 47 runs batted in Rollins and Utley will follow. It has been a tough spell for Peterson. Getting under 100 in his last 19 games. 140 strikeouts this year. And he takes a strike, nothing in one. Of course, 
three games here in Houston with the use of the DH. And once Dodgers get back to playing in the National League, of course, now Kendrick's still on the shelf. The question becomes if Utley's going to play at second base. Everybody seems to think that's going to be the case. It wouldn't be or otherwise. Where does Kike Hernandez go? He may go to center unless Peterson starts to heat up. I think you're right, Charlie. I think that around the ball club, you're going to need to go with the offense production probably early in the game, and then you could also come back with Jock later in the game as a defensive replacement, depending on what the scoreboard looks like. And also because Kike is right-handed, Jock's left-handed, you could figure out you might want to pinch hit for him if he needed a home run. Kike is hitting over 300 and lately Peterson's hitting under 100 and it, it might vary also by who's starting uh, somebody was Zach Greinke or Clay Kershaw on the mound you might go with defense and let Jock play and with the other starters you might go with offense and let Kike play the first six innings and see where you're at either way it's been a rough patch of roads for Peterson over the past month we are moving from the marathon time to the sprint time here at the end. And so it's going to be about matchups right down to the day. Exactly what they want to do. Get the most production. Slice foul off to the left and out of play. I think when the season is over with if it doesn't happen in the next 40 some games for Jock that he's going to learn that there's another gear that he's going to have to find in this game and it, he is so good at trying his hardest and he's going to find out that maybe that is not the complete way to go about a season that less can be more at certain times but it works out a lead off walk you know I was saying something about those cores light cold hard facts mm -hmm. and here they are of course with the uh, reuniting of Chase Utley and Jimmy Rollins both games started together by a second baseman shortstop combination Whitaker and Trammell seem to be joined at the hip Beckert and Kessinger with the Cubs Charlie Gerringer and Billy Rogel with the Tigers Robinson Cano and Derek Jeter with those Yankee fellows By the way, if you're wondering about Davey Lopes and Bill Russell. 976 games Russell and Lopes played together. And one of the two is here tonight. Rollins. Takes high and away, one ball, no strike. Eight years that infield was together. Darby say Russell and Lopes, and boy, they were a lot of fun to watch. They were the gold standard for an infield. No infield has ever played as long together as that Fab Four. And I think that's a record that is safe and secure, what with free agency and all that modern day baseball is. Good change up right there. Had Jimmy out front. Rollins popped to third in his first at bat. Astros 2 0 on a Marisnik home run in the second. Byers has already walked three. And that's foul. I think those walks are the Dodgers laying off the high pitches and then also following off some of those high pitches and making him throw more and, and taking their walk. Dodgers have walked more than any other team in the big leagues this year. Breaking ball high and in. Rollins with Utley on deck. 
Fires understands how important it is here to try and get Jimmy Rollins out because you're coming right into the meat of the order. Left handed hitters abound with Chase Utley and Adrian Gonzalez coming up and Justin Turner in between. With the shift on, two to the Rollins, pops it up. Altuve. First out of the third inning. Chase Utley had been cold in his first 65 games, and after coming off the DL with that ankle injury, you can see in his last eight games, he is really hot. He's hit everything. Utley stepped on a ball in January. The ankle just never did come around. They finally shut him down on the DL as he was languishing around 200. But since coming off the disabled list, He's been red hot. Uh, way ahead of it. Well hit. It's nothing in one. Well, that's an example right there. That swing right there. Of what I like to call his hummingbird wings as quick as he can get the bat around on the inside and get the barrel to it. He is one of the shorter swings in the game. And since coming off the disabled list. 484, 15 for 31. And he takes a strike. It's nothing in two. One more professional hitter in the Dodger lineup. We know how consistent Howie Kendrick is when he gets back. Adrian Gonzalez, Justin Turner, Osmani Grandal with his All Star year, Chase Utley. One and two. It's hard to see with the eye all the time. The cameras here, because of the way the ballpark is configured, have to be slightly off center a little bit more. So we're going to get some tough reads on the center field camera, but Pitch Tracks has it accurately. One ball, two strikes. Six time All Star, Chase Utley. Second at bat. With the dot takes low. Peterson was dancing off first base. Castro, the catcher, has a great arm. 18 out of 57, he's cut down 32 percent. They've got the shift on for Utley as well. Justin Turner on deck. One out, top of the third. Thirty-year-old Mike Fires. Third time he has started against the Dodgers. The last two, of course, when he was in Milwaukee. Two and two to Chase Utley. Utley, six-time All-Star. Went to the division series five times, won four Silver Slugger awards. Went to the World Series twice, and was a World Series champion once. Dodgers drafted him in '97. He said, "Thanks, but no thanks." Went to UCLA instead. Three years later, the Phillies took him in the first round. Peterson back with the head first fly. Bill Welke is the first base umpire. Thirty thirty guy last year in Triple A. Fires knows he's got some wheels. He's also a center fielder. Might not have a lot of bags on the tally sheet, but still trying to keep him close. Peterson has stolen just three out of nine. Two and two to Utley. Rounded slowly to second. Altuve flips to second base, gets the force out there. Well, that was quick look. Well, that's a good read. So many landmarks for infielders on which base to throw to, and Altuve knows when Jock Peterson has to jump over that and where he is playing in between the baseline. 
that when he jumps over that doesn't necessarily mean oh I need to go to first he knows how he is between the two bags right in the middle so jock still got a long way to go and he makes the play gets the leading lady a quick turn and spin by Altuve and a perfect throw on the outfield side of the band but they weren't going to get Utley now Turner steps in he walked in a nine pitch at bat in the first inning two nothing Astros. Turner 14 home runs and 47 runs batted in. So Justin has slowed it down the past couple of weeks. 0 for 3 and a walk yesterday. On Tuesday in Oakland, he was hitless in five at bats. And on getaway day at Dodger Stadium, he was 0 for 4 against the Reds. Gonzalez on deck. 0 and 2. Turner takes high and inside. One ball, two strikes. And lined into the glove of Altuve, and that's that. Alonzo hits a walk in the man left, 2 nothing Astros, as we go to the bottom of the third. third inning we continue to talk about the newest addition to the Los Angeles Dodgers Chase Utley of course he was born in Pasadena grew up in Long Beach his parents still live there so he figures to see them a few more times at games he and his wife Jennifer and their two children have an off-season home in Sausalito in Northern California grew up a Dodger fan said his favorite players Steve Sachs Brett Butler Kirk Gibson of course and he seems to remember a certain pitcher that had a pretty good game two of the World Series in 1988 he says he was there and so were you. I happened to be on the mound that day. Pasadena kid. Probably got some things to talk about. Carlos Gomez leading it off in the third. Gomez single to right in his first at bat. With Correa on deck and Lowry to follow. Gomez has struggled since coming over to uh, the Astros. Chops and foul. Got to talk to Chase. He, he listed three guys that were his favorite players and just said, I remember him pitching game two. <laughs> well, 
Uh, you were wait I was waiting no. for something a well, retort from you. No. Well, okay. He remembered <laughs> you. That's nice. All right. Okay. I guess I forgive him. He's a middle infielder. <laughs> Gomez, Correa, and Lowry to hit here in the bottom of the third. Breaking ball. And Gomez is retired. That's a second strikeout for Brett Anderson. The Giants come to Dodger Stadium, big three games, Monday, August 31st, and Wednesday, Tuesday and Wednesday. The second. Be sure to get your tickets today and show up to the stadium wearing your Dodger blue to purchase. Visit Dodgers.com slash tickets. So two strikeouts for Anderson. And here is Correa. He's one of these almost too good to be true stories. When he was in fourth grade, grew up in Puerto Rico. He knew he wanted to be a major league player. Well, so did I. But <laughs> and he spoke no English. And his father was working two or three jobs just to keep the family afloat. And he wanted to learn English because he knew someday he was going to be a major league player. And lo and behold, that's exactly what happened. Kike Hernandez grew up in Puerto Rico as well. And so here's Correa, number one pick, arrives with all the, the hoopla. 15 home runs, 41 runs batted in before the age of 21. Now he's in pretty good company. There are but two others who have hit 15 home runs before turning 21 in a rookie season. Frank Robinson and Willie Mays. That's pretty good company. <laughs> yeah. Robinson hit his first 15 in 58 games. Willie Mays hit his first 15 in his first 55 games. Correa 15 home runs in his first 62 games. He arrived and he arrived sprinting on two and two. One on a miss strike three. That's three strikeouts now for Anderson. Brett started to hit his spots. The breaking ball that got Gomez out. He finally got to the place he wanted. You see right there a two strike changeup that looks like it's going to be slightly up and over the plate. Ends up slightly down and not on the plate. Two excellent pitches to get the strikeouts this inning. Jed Lowry stepping in. Lowry at 265. Bounce back to uh, Anderson in his first at bat. Two nothing Astros. It's hot. Larry fresh off the disabled list fouls it up the first baseline. They're going to the seventh in Pittsburgh, and the Giants lead the Pirates six to two behind Bumgarn. So by the looks of it, the Dodgers are going to have to take care of their own business tonight if they're going to maintain their two and a half game lead on San Francisco. Guys coming over from the trades, including now Chase Utley, want to play meaningful games in September. We're definitely going to be playing meaningful games in September with this club. Three games with the Giants. We we're just talking about August 31st, September 1st, and 2nd. Back in July, the Dodgers had a five-game lead, but now that's dwindling. Makes every game important now. This is going to be a tough play for Turner. Flip, and he gets it. Nicely done by Justin Turner. Four in a row retired by Anderson. It'll be Gonzalez and Ethier and Grandal to bat for the Dodgers in the fourth, trailing by two.
at 4 o'clock. Zach Cranky and Scott Casimir. And on Sunday, Clayton Kershaw and Lance McCullers. Monday, an off day, then three in Cincinnati. Then the Dodgers will return home next weekend to host the Cubs. Adrian Gonzalez beginning the fourth. It's outside, one ball and no strikes. Gonzalez flied to right in his first at bat. The Astros employ the shift for almost every hitter, whether it's righty or left. Didn't seem kind of strange in Oakland. They didn't shift hardly at all. They played Gonzalez straight away. And Jock Peterson also. Andre Ethier is on deck. Yasmani Grandal to follow. These Astros, with Jeff Lou now and AJ Finch are kind of one of these new age clubs, and they've turned things around over the past couple of years. One ball, two strikes to Adrian Gonzalez. Last year the Astros were 70 and 92. And that was a 21 game improvement over 2013 when they were 51 and 101. Inside. Two balls and two strikes. In 2012. The Astros lost 107 games. It was out with the old and in with the new. And the 2 2 to Gonzalez. 3 and 2. The Fires has been his own worst enemy to this point, despite holding the Dodgers scoreless. 65 pitches through three plus innings, and he's given up three walks. Those three walks, the only base runners. You have to get a hit yet. The pitch count at 65. The Astro bullpen, though, is very good. And a call strike three. Second strikeout for Fires. That's the first out of the fourth. Fires fastball has a tendency to stay straight, sometimes even throws a cutter. This ends up being a changeup. You see. Adrian flinch a little bit as that ball comes back, tails back, and catches the inside corner. Ethier a walk at his first plate appearance. Double pepperoni. Yeah, he was calling to find out if the pitch was a strike. Probably the same phone they used to check to see if we want to go for the instant replay challenge. Adrian calling to John Pratt to take him. Big rip. Nothing in two to Ethier. Guys used to have to run up the tunnel and find the, the television screen and rewind the VCR tape in my day. And before your day, they shrugged their shoulders and went about to the next at bat. I remember asking, I remember asking Fred Clare for a budget to create a TV room. A chopper to second, and Altuve will throw out easier to us. First TV room was only two 24 inch screens with two VCR. Machines connected to them, and they installed a satellite dish on top of the elevator shaft at Dodger Stadium. It was the beginning of our technology. Gasmani Grandal took a call third strike at his first at bat. Fires has struck out two, walked three, and the Dodgers still looking for their first hit. Jake Marisnik's second inning home run the difference. It's 2 0 Astro lead. Top half of the fourth. So 
Myers comes practically 100% overhand. A lot of arm angle is built from spine angle. So he also gets his arm up. He really puts the shoulder straight up from his spine. A lot of guys throw from a kind of a general three-quarter angle, but then to get higher, they, they tilt their spine. But he, he does both. Gets his arm up and tilts towards first base. Well, throwing a baseball is not a natural thing to do. No, there's only a certain range there where your arm will move really fast because the shoulder joint gets compressed when you bring it up closer and closer to your ear. It doesn't move very fast. So the way to get more on top or the way to get down, land down under and throw a sidearm is, is to tilt your spine one way or the other. Little roller and fires. will take it all by himself. Nothing across. We go to the bottom of the fourth. The Astros lead the Dodgers. Two nothing. Nissan today for great offers on our most exciting lineup ever. Shop at ChooseNissan.com and buy DraftKings. Play daily fantasy baseball for free on DraftKings.com. Use promo code Blue Crew for free entry. Big crowd here at Minute Maid Park. Passing about 41,000. And on a rainy night in Texas, I mean, they've had some serious thunderstorms early this morning and late tonight. And the roof at 16 year old Minute Maid Park is well sealed shut. Evan Gaddis by the left in his first at bat. He takes outside one ball and no strikes. It'll be Gaddis, Rasmus, and Carter. To shortstop. Rollins will throw him out. First out of the fourth inning. Be one of the first 40,000 fans in attendance on Saturday. A week from tomorrow when the Dodgers host the Cubs and pick up your very own Oral Hershiser pin number six in the Cy Young Pin Collector Series presented by 76. For more information, visit Dodgers.com slash promotion. Can you get me one? I'll work on it, Charlie. I'll work. I can't promise. I you know people. I, I, I know people, but I don't know if they'll give me any pins. Colby Rasmus struck out swinging in his first at bat. When you promise a pin to the first 40,000, there's not a lot of extras. A lot of ballparks, they promise giveaways to the first 10,000 fans. Mm -hmm. Rasmus takes outside. 
One and one. I think they made 40,000 and 10, so you got to get into the one top of those 10. 10 huh? Yeah, you got, I, you're on the list. I aspire to be in your top 10. You, you've got a chance. It's going to probably be a lottery. All right. One ball, two strikes to Rasmus. Take a look here on pitch tracks. Yes, sir. Well, if you're going to get a wild pitch, you might as well get your money's worth. That's a nice sound on that wild pitch. Just a little off the leather and then whack on the signage. Rasmus came up with the Cardinals in 2009, then to the Blue Jays. And he chops one to first. Gonzalez has to sprint there. Anderson late to the dancers, two out. Left-handed pitchers have a tendency to fall off towards third, and if you have a little bit of a brain cramp and don't break on time, you see the swing of the leg. He broke on time. He's just not that fast. And Adrian, between the two Dodgers going for the bag, Adrian is the fleet of foot and the one with the ball. Two out, and Chris Carter coming up. Carter single with two out, nobody on in the second inning. And then Jake Marisnik, who is on deck, would hit a two-run home run. And that's a difference in the game to this point. Carter with the hit at 183, and this time he grounds it to shortstop. And Rollins will throw him out. A 1-2-3 inning for Anderson, who has retired seven in a row. We go to the fifth, 2-0 Houston. He was born in the fifth ward in the inner city, went to high school here in Houston. I asked him earlier today why he loves coming back. He said more, simply it's because it's home. He has dozens of family members and friends here. He was able to get them a suite here at Minute Maid Park to watch the game. He said being around family is the best. I asked him if he got some home cooking from his mom. He said it's my dad's side of the cooking, eating Cajun food. He had crab legs last night. Happy to be home, boys. Michael Bourne and Carl Crawford. That's a... A one-two punch. A couple of really fast fellas. Crawford takes a strike, and it's nothing in one. Carl was a second-round pick of the Rays back in 1999. Hernandez on deck, and Peterson to follow. The Dodgers still looking for their first hit. Crawford takes high, one and one. Including tonight in the last... Three and a half games. The Dodgers have been held to eight runs and 16 hits. No runs and no hits tonight. Two runs and two hits on Wednesday. And so, combination of Mike Fires, Jesse Chavez, 
and Felix Dubron. And the Dodgers have been uh, inert. Got to get good pitches to be a good hitter. In the Chavez game. The last game for the Dodgers, not yesterday, of course, because it was an off day, but they missed a lot of balls down the middle. They did get good pitches to hit, and they were swinging at them and were just missing them, not barreling them up. So far, Fires has thrown a lot of pitches, but a lot of balls, and yet they haven't gotten many good pitches to hit. Popped it up. Castro, halfway down the line. The Dodgers have done an awful lot of fouling out the big foul territory in Oakland. And they've done it here three times. It's just one out in the fifth. The longest fires has ever gone in a no hit bid was six innings, and that was three years ago when he was with the Brewers, and he did it against Cincinnati. Dodgers hitless through the four first. Four and a third. P.K. Hernandez fouls it off and it's nothing in one. Jock Peterson on deck. Tomorrow night, Zach Granke and Scott Casimir. Hernandez pops this one up. Now Tuve taking charge. Dodgers haven't even hit the ball hard yet. I'm trying to think of one, Charlie. <laughs> uh, line drive, El Tuve caught maybe. Is there a line drive? No. Yeah, line four, Justin Turner. Inside fastball, inside out. That's about the only one I can remember. Up the middle. Two out. And Peterson. They tie it away. One ball and no strikes. Fires has faced the Dodgers before. This is his fourth start lifetime. Based on his history, his ERA against the Dodgers is under three. And heading south again tonight. Two balls, no strikes to Peterson who walk in his first at bat. Giants 6 3 over the Pirates. They head to the eighth in Pittsburgh. Peterson takes a strike. It's two and one. On Wednesday, the Dodgers had four base runners in Oakland. A Rollins home run and a Hernandez double and a couple of walks. Tonight, three walks, and that's been it so far. Three and one to Peterson. Jimmy Rollins on deck and then Chase Utley to follow. Chuck gets a lot of walks because pitchers don't want to throw him strikes. They don't want to throw him strikes because he has outstanding power and also he has a tendency to chase. So on his disciplined nights, he gets walks. On his non disciplined nights, he strikes out. There's, there's ball four, but he's still up there. So he's got a chance for the walk still and a chance for the strikeout still and a chance for the home run. but. Those are the three conclusions he gets mostly. Mentioned a lot over the course of the season. Over 50% of his at bats, it will result in a strikeout, a walk, or a home run. Three and two, two out. The shift is on on the right side of the infield. The outfield straight away, and he strikes out swinging and that'll end the inning. Third strikeout for Fires, who has a no hitter through five. We'll go to the bottom of the fifth. 
with Marisnik, Castro, and Altuve coming up. Launched one to deep left. His sixth home run of the year, worthy of a Carl's Cam replay. Marisnik in 2014 was traded from the Marlins to the Astros, and in the trade was Kike Hernandez. Hernandez, of course, would go from the Marlins to the Dodgers over the winter. Nick takes outside. There's Kike. But Marisnik now six home runs, 23 runs batted in. Fastball upstairs is a little late. And it's one and two. Well, after a shaky first couple of innings, Anderson appears to have settled down. Well hit the left center. That one's got a long way to go and it's off the bullpen wall. And Marisnik will hold at second base. With his 12th double. In some parts of this park it's really easy to hit home runs. In other parts it's nearly impossible. Charlie, you were all over this when it was off the bat. This is going a long way. And you go, well, how does a ball that lands with that trajectory on the warning track end up? Take a look at that 404 mark right there. That's why it is just a Grand Canyon here out in Houston to the left center. Stands jut out. The bullpen is there. The warning track is wide and it is deep. Down the lines, it's easy. Power alley to power alley. Good luck. You're on your own. There goes Marissa. Throw down to third base. And he's got a stolen by quite a bit. That's his 17th stolen base. That's the perfect time to steal third. You give up the double and you're a little bit on your heels concentrating on the next hitter. And if you don't pay attention and the runners decide and he's going to be aggressive, you see he gets a longer chance to get a lead there with the jump because of a left-handed pitcher on the mound the head gets turned to for first base quicker so you can get that extra half step and that's what he needed to get in there safely 17 out of 22 for Marisnik the Dodgers are forced to bring the infield in Castro doubled in his first at bat and takes outside and low one ball and no strikes But Marisnik has feasted on Brett Anderson tonight. 400 foot home run and a 400 foot double. At a 90 foot stolen base. As a starting pitcher, you look at a lineup and you look at sections, but you mainly look at the three and four hitter about who do I not want to beat me and you start choosing and picking your poison. 
I don't think you go all the way down to Mersnick to think about your eighth hitter. I gotta watch out for him. Coming into the game hitting 228. Got under it. Ethier coming in. Sets himself. And Marisnik will not go. Wise thinking. That's a big time throw from Andre Ethier out there. And it's not the fact that he used all of his arm, but he knew he was shallow enough that it would just take a nice, solid big league throw to shut down to catch it but look how he just gets behind it takes his time doesn't just unleash one missed the cutoff man just a nice basic solid throw I get it in the area I'll be fine where is Nick knowing if he doesn't do anything stupid I can't go Ethier set himself perfectly and so he unleashed the perfect one hop throw the Dodgers still keep the infield in and here is Altuve Takes a strike, nothing in one. Altuve tough to defend because he hits the ball all over. Ground ball to second and last at bat, and then the base hit the left in his first at bat. One out of two tonight. And since the All Star break, Jose Altuve is hitting 336. Fred Anderson trying to dig himself out of the hole. He was in trouble in the first inning, first and second, nobody out. Then he got a double play and a ground out. The two out, nobody on in the second. Surrendered a, a single to Chris Carter, and Marisnik hit the home run. Now Marisnik with the leadoff double. One out in the fifth. And Altuve fouls it into the dirt, nothing in two. Hey. Right here, Brett Anderson looking for the strikeout. Altuve is not a big time strikeout guy. Only 49 strikeouts and 469 at bats. Carlos Gomez on deck. The infield tight. The 0 and 2. Got him. That's a huge strikeout. Fourth in the game for Anderson, getting Altuve, who is tough to strike out, two gone. I love the pitch selection. I love the pitch execution. Make it close enough that he's got to protect, but the outstanding movement, the bottom dropped out of that sinker, wasn't about velocity at all. It was about the depth of the movement. Now that Dodger infield can retreat, Carlos Gomez one for two. Fouls it off and into the Astro dugout. It's nothing in one. So much adrenaline and so much pressure when you have a man on third and no out. And then once you get one out, you think, oh, I got a chance. And then you get the big strikeout. You get a lot of energy in your body, and you're about to come up to the next hitter with two outs, and you just can't relax. You're not in the dugout yet. You haven't finished it off. Two-thirds of the way out of it. Correa's on deck. Gomez squares to bunt. Justin Turner was way back. And so a successful bunt would have driven in a run. Difference between September and late August baseball and beginning of the season to the middle of the season. A guy like Gomez wouldn't even think about bunting then. But now we're getting down to game to game. Whatever it takes to get that run in. And Gomez is struggling. Here with a new club hasn't produced and he's looking for any way he can do anything he can do to help him. Both the Dodgers and Astros first place in their respective divisions each by two and a half games. Two balls and two strikes to Carlos Gomez. He's got a good sinker on the outside part of the plate right now to right handed hitters. Got him. Anderson gets out of the jam. A leadoff double, a stolen base, but Castro flies out. Altuve and Gomez have been struck out. Will go to the six. Two nothing. Bill. Oh, sorry.
hit. Last time the Astros had a no hitter. 12 years ago. At Yankee Stadium. They used a half a dozen pitchers. And George Steinbrenner publicly apologized to the patrons the next day. And of course when. The Yankee players arrived the next day. They didn't find it particularly humorous. Jimmy Rollins leads off. Of course, that was the middle of that 2003 season where the Yankees took off and uh, had the memorable playoffs with the Red Sox. And the Aaron Boone home run. And George, if memory serves correctly, thought that public apology propelled his team to the second half. Well, was he a jockey with his quotes in the paper? Well, there was a plan <laughs> method to the madness or it was just madness. Rollins down on strikes. Meanwhile, it's beginning to get serious here in Houston. Breaking ball right here. Dodgers thinking high fastball. He's been trying to throw that mostly, but then he drops one out of the sky. Right handed. Clayton Kershaw type curveball. I guess four or five years ago, whatever it was, the Dodgers were no hit. By about a half a dozen Seattle Mariners. Something safe though. Well, that one. The drama of a half a dozen pitchers putting together a no hitter is not quite like one pitcher, one team. It's more of a statistical. Gee, that's cool. Ewa Utley, one ball, one strike. Chase in his first game with the Dodgers has bounced out twice. The shift on for Utley, the one one. And it's backhanded by Altuve. Fans here at Minute Maid Park are beginning to sense something special is going on. I would think Fires is going to need some relief help to where the pitch count is at 92 right now, but if he continues like this and can keep it somewhere under 130, maybe they'd give him a shot at it. I think the Dodgers are not thinking about getting no hit right now. I think they're thinking about climbing back into this game only two nothing. Turner is walked and popped out. And he hits one deep to left but it is hooking foul. Ample home run distance. That may have been the hardest ball hit all night. He's hit them both. This one foul, and then a line drive up the middle that Altuve caught in one of his at bats. Little change up that was up. Tried to keep it fair, but just too far out in front. Not exactly Carlton Fisk. Nothing in one to Turner. 14 home runs and 47 runs batted in. Gonzalez on deck. Three walks, the sum total of the Dodger offense to this point of the night. To short, Correa picks it up. One, two, three. Twelve straight, retired by Fires. We go to the bottom of the six.
Rodgers and the Giants and the first 40,000 fans in attendance receive a Justin Turner bobblehead presented by Security Benefit. The tickets go to Dodgers.com slash promotions. There's JT. Narrowly missing a home run. The Dodgers still looking for their first hit. We begin the bottom of the six and Carlos Correa coming up. Picks outside, one ball, no strikes. It's a cool bobblehead. The height of his leg kick. Good looking. I'm sure that'll be in very high demand. Lowry on deck and Gaddis to follow. Heard a story about Correa today, in fact. But in the past week, he was walking around uh, Houston and he saw a Ronald McDonald. He wasn't quite sure what it was. Now the 1 1. Brown ball. Anderson will throw him out. And when they explained to him what it was, later in the day, he walked in unannounced and just said hello to the kid, wanted no publicity, just went in, went out. There's a kid who just does the right thing. And uh, he's built like A Rod and internally built like Cheater. Pirates with a run in the bottom of the eighth. They pulled it within two at PNC. Lowry with a ground ball. Look at Jimmy Rollins. Can he throw him out? What a play by Jimmy Rollins. The dive from the knees. He gets up and throws out Lowry. A beautiful play. The Morongo replay, it is definitely worthy of. And there's four parts of this. The jump, the dive, and then right here getting up. But then, oh, he just gets it out of his glove in time. That was the part that I thought might not be fast enough. But the rocket arm, the slow-mo cam. Hinch wants the replay, and he's going to get one. Comes the challenge, and this is the part it's about. Well, let's see. I think he's out. So do I. Of course, we don't get a vote. And New York and us don't get along. <laughs> they get a completely great play by Jimmy. Rocket arm, and I think the strength of the arm is going to be out by a hair. I think the other angle's a little better. Take a look from this one. They can't see where the ball is. Back to the, the original angle is the, this. Yeah, is this it. is the one. I think he's out. There Bill Wilkie, no who's the first base umpire, who made the call, and he's out. And the crew chief. John Hirschbeck. Their call is upheld. A beautiful play by Rollins. He's won four gold gloves, and at the other end, Adrian Gonzalez. Dodgers first base has won four of his own. Evan Gaddis takes a ball in the dirt. He's 0 for 2. Gaddis is flied to left and bounced to short. Two out, nobody on. Pitcher's duel. Brett Anderson just thinking about keeping Gaddis in the ballpark. You don't mind a two out single right here, but the last thing you want is to try and do too much and overthrow something, leave the ball up, and give up a home run. You can take a few hits to get a run. Get your team in the dugout. Get him another chance to get some. Get a hit first of all. Gaddis is in some historic company. Most triples with no stolen bases in a season. There's a strike. Three balls and a strike. Great Johnny Mize in 38 with the Cardinals had 16 triples. No stolen bases. 
Dale Long just as well remembered for the eight home runs in eight consecutive games. Had 13 triples and 55, and that one is well hit. It is on its way. No doubt about it, his 19th of the year, and the Astros now have a three to nothing lead. Second home run of the night given up by Anderson at his 14th of the season. Three nothing Houston. Fred Anderson is going to kick himself. Two out, nobody on, a right handed hitter with a lefty on deck to fall behind 3 0, and all of a sudden it would have been better off if the 3 0 pitch had been a ball. Because now he has to throw a 3 1 pitch, and he does what we said he doesn't want to do. Leave something up that Gaddis can leave the park with. Gaddis so businesslike after the swing. There was no styling, no posing. It was one about his business. Both home runs given up by Anderson have come with two out. 357 feet the one. That one traveled. Short hop by Rollins, and that will end the inning. And the Dodgers still looking for their first base hit. Trail three to nothing as we go to the seventh with Gonzalez, Ethier, and Grandal coming up. Brett Anderson gives up the home run, and he is torqued. He yelled at his glove right after the inning was over. I don't believe it was the glove that threw it. <laughs> Adrian Gonzalez, Dodgers still looking for their first hit. I used to yell at my glove all the time. I didn't want people to see what I was saying. Gonzalez 0 for 2. Takes a strike and it's 1 and 1. So the Dodgers down 3. Held to 2 runs and 2 hits on Wednesday. 4 runs and 7 hits on Tuesday. 2 runs and 7 hits on Sunday. So trailing by three is a tall order these days. And it's one and two to Gonzalez. Andre Ethier is on deck. Fires 98th pitch. Three walks. That's all the Dodgers have to show for their offense to this point tonight. And it's two and two. The one thing about the Astros in their defense, they are not shy about the shift. Eighth year's got a walk in two plate appearances. Gonzalez to Altuve.
13 in a row have been retired by fires. Eighth year stepping in. We're at a point now, this is a sighting. This, this is possible. And the last time the Astros had a no hitter 12 years ago in the Bronx and six pitchers put it all together beginning with Roy Oswald and the way things are going fires now at 100 pitches he may need some help before it's all over. Andre didn't like the call and pitch tracks on the edge. No balls and two strikes. I don't think it's going to take six pitchers if the Astros do it tonight. Maybe take three. Maybe takes one. Maybe it'll take just a starter and a closer. But I don't think we're going to need six if it would happen. No balls and two strikes. Fifth strikeout for Fires. It's the pitch we talked about at the beginning. You see the pitches by inning. The third, the 22, and those early ones at all because of the walks. When there's been no walk, pitch count's been under 15. That fastball up that you gotta lay off of. You're gonna have a chance to get a hits off this guy. Chris Hatcher is warming up in the Dodger bullpen. Brandall takes a breaking ball for a strike and it's nothing in one. Just looking at the body language of fires out there. He gets the ball back, he is ready to pitch. He's retired 14 consecutive Dodgers. He's walked three. 0 and 1 to Grandall. He's been struck out and bounced back to fires. Breaking stuff like now this since it's been around the third time around the first time around the order it was mostly the high fastballs and the change up second time around the order he started to add the breaking ball but now you're right on a few more of those to actually lead hitters off with and finish them off with there's another one that was the harder one that was a little bit of a slider slash cutter upset with himself right there because to a left handed hitter it's probably a pitch he wants to pitch up around waist high and he pulled it down and in. Two and one the 106 pitch of the game from fires is a strike. That's the pitch that he wanted to pitch before. Looking to come up and in, kind of jam the hitter slightly, make it up so the hitter wants to swing at it because he likes it, but then get it in off the barrel. Two balls, two strikes, two out. And 15 batters in a row have been retired by Fires. He's got a no hitter through six and a half, and the Astros lead the Dodgers three to nothing.
bottom of the seventh against Chris Hatcher. It's been Mraznik tonight who has made life miserable. Hatcher in his 30th appearance, a record of one and four, and an ERA of five and two thirds. So here comes Chris Hatcher to face Chris Carter. And again, the Dodgers bullpen, which has lost its way over the past couple of months, a collective ERA of over six. Now it is Hatcher coming in, trying to keep the three nothing deficit at that. Carter with two out in the second inning, single to left. Riznik, who's on deck, would then hit a home run. Evan Gaddis hit a home run in the sixth. It was 3 0 Houston. And the Dodgers still looking for their first hit. No balls and a strike. A ball and a strike to Carter. So Brett Anderson's night is over. Three runs and seven hits in six innings. Two home runs. Both of them coming with two out. Two run blast in the second. And the solo shot by Gaddis in the sixth. He's given up nine home runs now in his last seven games. It's really been the only thing that's hurt him. Two and two. Chris Hatcher, since coming off the DL, is throwing the ball much better, not just statistically and velocity, but his accuracy has been outstanding, and he's got better plane on the ball, the downward angle. Three and two. Throwing more pitches like that with the slider. You saw him at the beginning of the year before going on the DL, a lot of fastballs that were up, and then when he finally felt throw a strike with his fastball, be in the middle of the plate up. And then the split finger was either in the dirt or hanging. And now he's thrown a lot more quality pitches. I like that one. Carter struck out for the 129th time this year. First out of the seventh. Jake Marisnik, Riverside Poly. Marco top tier play. It went as far. As it sounded loud, 407 feet, his sixth home run of the year. And then he would double. And then he would steal third. So Jake Marisnik, the home folks back in Southern California, enjoying his work in the Arco top tier play. Nick once with the Marlins traded here in a deal that involved Kike Hernandez, who went from the Astros to the Marlins, and of course Hernandez starting at second base for the Dodgers. On this night, a foul tip off the mast of Yasmani Grandal. A little breather after this one, a little meeting with Chris Hatcher, home plate umpire, down to pain. Remember, Grandall missed seven games with a concussion. And a foul tip just like that. One and two to Marisnik with Jason Castro on deck. Last licks for the Pirates in Pittsburgh. Giants 6 4. Looking ahead to the eighth inning for the Dodgers. Crawford, Hernandez, and Peterson do up. Of course, with the DH, the Dodgers have only four bench players. Alex Guerrero, A.J. Ellis, Scott Van Slyke, and Yasiel Puig, who's got the hamstring issue. I don't think it's that bad for Puig. Seems to be in a pretty good frame of mind in the clubhouse prior to the game today. 
Two balls, two strikes. Swung on and just strike three. So Hatcher comes in and strikes out the first two batters he faces here in the seventh. He's not only throwing quality pitches, but he's throwing quality pitches with all three of his pitches. This is the split finger, and that's outstanding. He's thrown the low and away fastball outstanding. He's thrown the up and in fastball, the high and away fastball, the slider. We saw a strikeout to Carter in the at bat before, and now using the split finger. Jason Castro has doubled in two at bats tonight. Takes outside and low one ball and no strikes. Altuve Fight. on deck. Fight. Three runs and seven hits for the Astros. The Dodgers still looking for their first hit of the night. Mike Fires to this point has thrown 107 pitches. He has thrown 113 twice this year. One and one. Two balls and a strike. This is a very high level pitch. If you try and throw a backdoor slider as a short reliever, Chris Hatcher feeling really good about his execution. Bottom dropped out of that split finger. He pulled it a little bit inside to a lefty, but the location and the late movement. That's almost unhittable. The 2-2 two -two is inside and low three and two. Jason Castro. Outfield straight away infield back. No sign of a shift for Castro. And a fly ball to center field. Peterson's camped underneath. And that's going to do it. We head to the eighth. Fires has a no hitter. The Dodgers trail three. Nothing. Mushroom buttery jack with melted garlic herb butter. And by Flex Alert. This summer, the power is in your hand. Go to flexalert.org. Well, we head to the eighth inning, and Mike fires. 
has a no-hitter. He has walked three. He has struck out six. He's retired the last 15 batters in succession. And the Astros make a defensive change at first base. Marwin Gonzalez takes over over there. Carl Crawford, who grew up in Houston, Kike Hernandez and Jock Peterson to bat for the Dodgers in the eighth. Then the question comes up, Mr. Pitcher, pitching coach and assistant GM. <laughs> when you've got a no hitter going, and you remember what happened with uh, Santana in New York. Yep. How far is too far for a pitcher in pursuit of a no hitter? You don't want to get out of the ordinary of their normal pitch count. I mean, I, I, I was never scared of 135, 140 pitches. Either was Fernando Valenzuela and some of us in that generation. But this generation is not used to that workload. Nishak and Perez warming up in the Astro bullpen. And it's not the excuse of creatures of habit as much as you're just probably not used to pitching with that fatigue level and keeping your mechanics together and taking care of yourself in between starts with that wear and tear. A lot more conservative route now. 16 in a row, three strikeouts in succession, seven and a third, a no hit ball for that man, Mike Fires. 113 pitches is as high for this year. Fires, that's the 110th pitch that gets that strikeout on Carl. And that's the first out of the eighth. Pirates are hitting in the bottom of the ninth, and the Giants are leading them in Pittsburgh six to four. Kike Hernandez takes outside. One ball and no strikes. Hernandez is fouled out, popped out. About the closest thing the Dodgers have had to a hit was a long foul ball off the bat of Justin Turner. He's had some ground balls that were fielders' choices because of the outstanding shift that they've. Put and some hard ground balls given the hits to normal infield, but now they have the fielders in the right places. One ball, one strike, one out. Drops it right down in there, the curveball. High fastball, curveball pitcher. No reaction from Fires. He's starting to actually take it seriously. There's not a lot of emotion right there. Now with two out, Jock Peterson. Peterson has struck out and walked. Very rarely in a no hitter do you have the bullpen up, but that's all about pitch count. Superstitions in baseball would be nobody touch that mound until your starter gives up a hit. AJ Hinch could have a decision, Charlie, because if he gets the no hitter here, they, they've got a long term goal this year. This is not a last place Houston Astro team, but this would be a significant thing for the franchise. Two balls and no strikes. And the Astros, after a half a dozen really awful years, have come back in a big way. They're in first place. Get themselves a no hitter in the middle of a pennant race. And the question is at what cost to a, a pitcher's shoulder or elbow? 
talking about the Santana Terry Collins issue some years back with the Mets in New York. Three and oh. Three and one. Last year, the Astros won 70 games. The previous three years, they never won more than 56. Now three and one to Peterson. Three and two. Better than 33,000 and a ballpark that seats about 40,000. And they're all on their feet. A no hitter through eight. 18 in a row has been retired. Nine strikeouts for Fires. Three nothing Astros. We go to the bottom of the eighth. at the bottom of the screen Mike Fires already a season high 120 pitches in search of his first career no hitter the Dodgers have not been no hit for a very long time in fact the Astros haven't had a no hitter since 2003 Utley makes his debut and has been hitless Jake Marisnik out of Riverside a two run home run in the second inning that's the DraftKings game summary Jimmy Garcia is now on in relief after scoreless and hitless inning by Chris Hatcher. Jimmy looking to get back on the beam and start hitting his spots. He's having a tendency to to make a mistake about every third pitch and it's usually near the middle of the plate. He's got to start working more towards the edges and get multiple pitches over for strikes. Top of the order for the Astros in the bottom of the eighth Altuve Gomez and Korea. Altuve. Is one for three. The last time the Dodgers were no hit was 2012 in Seattle. And it was a group effort that began with Kevin Millwood and ended with Tom Wilhelmson. And in between, the 102 Altuve is Charlie Furbush, Stephen Pryor, Lucas Ledge, Brandon Lee, and Wilhelmson. Before that, it was a combined effort with Jared Weaver and Jose. Ardenado 
back in 2008 in Anaheim. So the last two no hitters against the Dodgers have been group efforts. The last complete game no hitter, Kent Merker, in 94 at Dodger Stadium when he was pitching for the Braves. One and two to Altuve. And it's gone final in Pittsburgh. Where the Giants have beaten the Pirates six to four. That's done. And so unless the Dodgers can turn things around and they're down to their final three outs and still looking for their first base hit, the lead at the end of the night will be a game and a half. The Dodgers in 136 days this season have been in first place for 126 of them. I've been the team being chased and I've been the team chasing. The Giants are thinking as long as we keep it under three or so with seven games against them we got a chance. Altuve foul tips it and stays alive. You just want to have it in your own hands. You don't want to hope somebody else can beat the team you're chasing. After tonight, 41 games are left, seven against the Giants. It's always the Dodgers. And Giants. On two and two, Altuve to center field. Peterson makes a diving catch. Beautiful play turned in by Jock Peterson. Well, the whole team has taken an over so far tonight, but Jock Peterson never takes an over with his glove. Outstanding jump, outstanding job, keeping the leadoff hitter off the base right here. He got two strikeouts and a walk at the plate, but an outstanding play in the field. Well, that's the first out of the eighth. Looking ahead to the ninth for the Dodgers, it'll be at the top of the order. Jimmy Rollins, Chase Utley, and Justin Turner. One ball and no strikes. For Carlos Gomez, who's one for three tonight. Diving stab by Turner picks it up and throws him out. A terrific play turned in by Justin Turner. So two outstanding defensive plays behind Yimmy Garcia here in the bottom of the eighth. A really good play by Justin. This ball ends up actually behind him there. Catches the webbing of the glove with the complete outstretched arm. And I'll tell you what, he makes a good jump, jab, step, crossover, gets up quick, and a quick throw over there. Just enough on it to get him. Now Carlos Correa stepping in, and he is 0 for 3. The Giants have won. The Dodgers still looking for their first hit with two out of the bottom of the eighth. And the top third of the Dodger order to bat in the ninth. Correa tonight is 0 for 3. Bounced into a double play, struck out, and bounced back to Brett Anderson, who went six innings, three runs, and seven hits tonight. With Mustard at 95, it's nothing and two. Garcia throwing some balls near the edges tonight. Where he needs to pitch. He's not a guy that's going to change speeds a lot. He's coming at you with a hard fastball with tailing action and a hard slider. Within a close enough range of one speed, you better be accurate and have late movement. No balls, two strikes. One and two.
The Blue Jays lead the Angels in the first inning in Anaheim. Still hitting 3 0 Toronto. The Astros lead the Angels by two and a half. Correa stays alive. Watch every out of market game live or on demand in True HD on over 400 mobile and connected devices with MLB.TV Premium. Real time highlights, live look ins, pitch tracking widget, and more. Every night on every device, blackout and other restrictions apply. Visit MLB.TV for details. Now the 1 2. Swung on it. Missed strike three. So Garcia retires the Astros in order. Last licks for the Dodgers. Mike Fires has a no hitter through eight. Rollins, Huntley, and Turner coming up. Tweet your photo with the hashtag SNLA Data Strong Fan for a chance to be shown in an upcoming telecast brought to you by T Mobile. Well, nearly everybody standing inside Minute Maid Park. 30 year old Mike Fires, three outs from a no hitter. The first by the Astros since 2003. Rollins leads off. And takes high one ball no strikes fires to this point has struck out the last five batters in a row 18 in a row he has given up three walks and that's been that the shift is on for Rollins taking all the way it's one and one a routine ground ball to short is a base hit Jimmy Rollins looking for the walk right there now he's going to be swinging the bat Just outside, two and one. When the Astros last threw a new hitter back in 2003 at Yankee Stadium, a half a dozen pitchers combined. Two and two. Roy Oswald, Peter Monroe, Kirk Sarvis, Brad Lidge, Octavio Dotel, and Billy Wagner. Now it's all in the hands of Fires. So Rollins has popped to third, popped to second, and taken a call third strike. Fires pitching the game of his life. Two balls and two strikes to Rollins beginning the ninth. To right field and deep. Marisnik going back, way back at the wall. He takes it down. That's as close as the Dodgers have come to a hit all night. 
The hardest hit ball just hit in a tough place. The gaps here are so big. He's got 373 to work with, and Jimmy hit it about 370. Fires is two outs away. From Pompano Beach, Florida. What a deal that turned out to be for the Astros. This is his fourth start with Houston. Rollins flies to right. Huckley takes outside. One ball, no strikes. Huckley tonight in his first appearance with the Dodgers. Pass to first, pass to second, and pass to second. Two balls and no strikes. I think the last time Chase Huntley was involved in a no hitter this late, he was a Philadelphia Philly hitter, of course. And it was Josh Beckett on the mound. Fastball down the middle for the last out. 2 0. That one to right. Playable for Marisnik. One out away from a lead that's going to shrink to a game and a half. Justin Turner has walked, popped out, and grounded out. No balls and a strike. The last out is not easy for Fires, the guy who has the highest batting average in the big leagues over the last year and a half at the plate. Nothing in one. A hundred and thirty pitches for Fires. One ball and one strike. The 131st pitch is at 90 miles an hour. He started the game at 91. The arm speed is still there. The ball a strike and two out in the ninth. Second round pick of the Brewers in 2009. Two and two to Justin Turner. And the 11th no hitter in the history of the Houston. Mark Fox retires the final 21 hitters in a row. Strikes out nine. Walks three. The Dodgers have been shut out, and their lead over the Giants is down to a game and a half.
Mike fires. Player of the game. The Lexus player of the game. Who else? Ten strikeouts retires the final 21 batters in a row. The Astros at their 11th no-hitter in the history of the franchise. The Dodgers have been no-hit for the first time in three years. The Astros win it tonight. Three to nothing, and the Dodger lead now is one and a half over San Francisco. So that is a wrap for us from Houston. Carolina Rizzo. Coral Hershiser, Charlie Steiner saying good night and goodbye. We'll see you again tomorrow night. For now, we'll send it back to Access Sportsnet Dodgers, brought to you by Nissan. See you again tomorrow.